Uh, let's welcome Professor Rajendra P. Srivastava. He is an emeritus professor at the University of Kansas. Uh, and prior to that, he worked for two plus decades at the University of Kansas. He was the ENY chair professor. His work mostly is related to reasoning in uncertain world and uh, more uh, in Dam Damster Shaffer theory. And he has, he has been a prolific uh, researcher and a great publisher. He's published in most of the top journals in accounting and received several awards for his outstanding contribution to the field of belief networks. And uh, he has also been, uh, he has also served several top journals as, uh, as editor, sorry, associate editor, won several like, accolades for his uh, contribution to even practice, including forecasting not just uh, accounting systems in terms of fraud detection and things of that kind, but also on natural systems like you know, natural calamity probability and things of that kind. His, uh, as you could see that, his, uh, he has uh, enough interest in the natural sciences as well. He's a PhD in physics as well to begin with and then move to accounting. Okay, let's extend him a warm welcome. Thank you, thank you, Professor Blackwood, and thanks to my friends here and, and, and the faculty, also number of senior members. Thank you all. Uh, I think uh, having background in physics gives you a little uh, different uh, perspective of things what you do. And uh, it was not a planned uh, kind of a journey. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> I, I, I was uh, doing research uh, in uh, physics in Canada. Um, I got my PhD in uh, physics from Oregon State, uh, that was quantum physics. Uh, very abstract things. But I was having fun, and then I went to Canada and did my research associate in uh, uh, instructorship. And university based on my publication research, they gave me tenure. So I was happy, you know, because I was able to do what I wanted to do. Then I made some friends in business school. And uh, most of them were engineers, you know, Indian background. They kept kind of uh, converting me <laughs> in a way that uh, why not you, uh, you know, try to get a degree in accounting because they were looking for accounting professors and you'll be surprised. They couldn't even find anyone to talk to because it was far up north in Canada and the U.S. market was so good that nobody will even come to them. So one person, he just went after me, you know, and he took some convincing, you know, three years. <laughs> then I said, well, okay, I'm not getting younger, give me a book. So I got a book and read it, the first chapter. I didn't have patience to read any further. I said, well, I'll try. I went to several schools that he provided, you know, top schools, second year schools. Everybody admitted me with no background in accounting, not even knowing what debit credit is and no business, but they took risk. <clears throat> Except the top schools like Cornell and, you know, uh, Ohio State and all. They were not willing to take risk. <laughs> they said, well, we have, if you come on your own first year, then we'll fund you next year, following year. But financial support first year, you are on your own. Oklahoma somehow saw something in me and they took this. They said, don't worry, we, you know, provided the funding come and do. And I think uh, it was really a blessing in disguise because I first year, I finished mostly the MBA courses, second year I took the PhD seminar, third year I defended it, my dissertation. And now here to go, so my friend wants me to come and visit them you know, and want to show what they can offer. And I felt that I don't want to retire, this is too early for me, because there's been a small program, not much activity, no research. Kansas, I was told that is a good place, we have very good faculty, but don't expect to get tenure. <laughs> because two of the professors from Kansas were in Oklahoma who didn't get tenure there. So I don't know, I was uh, a big risk taker. I said, fine, I'll go there. And I think that was again a, a good lucky choice because when I went there, I got to really work with the best minds. Uh, the work uh, that Professor uh, Jacob Nelson and so Schaefer. So Schaefer was my colleague. He got his PhD from Princeton. And he developed a framework that is applicable in any domain, a real world, uh, where you make judgment on the uncertainty. First successful use was in the anti-ballistic missile in the US. They used this. What it is, when you have an object, what kind of object is it? So, image. 
So you cannot put that thought process in probability theory. You can say only this like threatening object, maybe 10%, 20%, 50%, less, we don't know, maybe something else. But in probability theory, you have to say if 30% is this, then 70% is not, you know. So, but they don't know. So that is what I did. But in 1995, when I became once a young professor, Ernst and Young created a center, Center for Auditing Research and Advanced Technology. My research was uh, in the auditing area. So I was doing my traditional work, and somehow I picked again a theoretical uh, basis of doing research in accounting and auditing. Although it was not well respected when I did my work, even the major professors would say that, you know, Theoretical work is not respected in auditing because a lot of people want empirical data, behavior, but theoretical, but that was my strength. Luckily, I found some paper that was published in a kind of review, and they used reliability modeling for engineering, reliability, you know, how reliable it is, so that the space crash when it goes up, you want that system to be 99.999% uh, kind of uh, reliable. So they develop a theory how to make it more reliable, you know, redundancy, this and that. So someone used that into accounting system, but made a mess. <laughs> so conclusion was kind of a, a erroneous about that. So I took that as my topic and wrote the dissertation. And I think it was lucky, you know, because I was able to get three or four papers of jar from that dissertation because it was really making a difference that all these things really yeah, in conceit. <laughs> then I met Glenn Schaefer because he came. And then I found opportunity. So for two years, you know, there was a kind of a, uh, no publication but because we were just building the process. But then it went on. It was pretty interesting. So 95, when I became a director, I said, well, why not we do something that is as I the technology? <clears throat> so first idea was that let's get the financial statements from public domain like uh, SEC, you know, kind of filings parse it and dump it to Excel spreadsheet for accountants. And we were uh, pretty quick to be able to do that. Well, one thing that we are all in the arm and fair, we have young minds and all, so it didn't take much time. So we were able to done that. Then I was uh, asked, requested by my colleagues, that can you give us all the companies that have this particular issue mentioned in the footnote? So we will tweak the program, the program will run on the weekend, and we'll give them Monday, you know, next day, here is all the data. So it was happening, it was helping PhD students and faculty. Then someone casually mentioned, I mean, see the, the progression. Why do I have to come to you? Why don't you develop something that we query the system and get the result? I said, okay, let's try that. So I had a student, you know, who was a computer scientist from Bangalore, outstanding interview. I mean, perfect score of anything a test you think of. So it was lucky for me to have him to work for me. So I said, well, let's try this idea. So we tried it. And by the end of the summer, we were able to have a prototype. So we were typing your query. The system gives you the data. But it was very slow. I find that research concept with the university. University SAM, they have a department for uh, <coughs> technology transfer. I don't know. You may have it too, Miss. Their job is to find which research project can be converted into business. So they saw this opportunity, so they contacted me. That we see this value here, we like to visit with you, and we can provide you more resources. Can you develop something further? But at the same time, they made me contact a professor in electro engineering computer science. And she was the world leader in transparency. So we <coughs> By the way, do you know that Google Earth was created by one of our students? Did you know that it was Kansas product, Google Earth? I don't know if anybody old enough. When you clicked on Google during the 90s, or whenever it came first, it is out Lawrence, Kansas. So that's the technology here we're talking about. So we, we had a PhD student in computer science to call my ideas and convert it into the most robust way. And uh, so it was kind of slow, you know. A lot of times I got uh, like, uh, there was a product, I don't know, some of you may know, 
Price Waterhouse at the product called Edward Scan. Have you heard the name? So we were presenting this work at one conference in Rutgers. They had to spend millions of dollars and more than five years, and they were not where we were in two years. A couple of reasons. One, we were in the university environment, multiple kind of uh, uh, you know, brains working on the idea, students, low <laughs> paying kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, labor work, so labor force. They wanted to work with us. I uh, felt that two reasons. We want to do research and they want to develop products. So that's the incompatible kind of goals. You know, so we'll be stuck in that. And the second one was that this was funded by one from young and they were by four others. So we said, no, we'll be on our own. And I think I'm glad that we did because we moved on our own pace and kept adding things. So 2012, that's when this thing started in terms of trying to make it a product. So I was already at that time, 70 years old. I was ready to retire, but I felt like if I don't do anything, anybody coming in my position as entrepreneurial professor is going to die. So I went to KU and said, all right, give me the license of this thing and I will develop it. And I'm very happy that I took the courage to do it. I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm not a businessman, and so that's a challenge. <laughs> so what I want to share with you, some of the things now you can do with a lot of exciting, I get excited about this research, you know, because so many things you can do. So I have been traveling around and showing that what all you can do. I mean, unlimited opportunity. The traditional work is that all right now. You have already cooked up data, run the liberation. If somebody has used 10, you use 10, 15, 15. But here, the opportunity that you can create your own data and go, you know, just think about it. It is available to you anywhere you are, anywhere in the world, wherever the internet is accessed. And that's the big thing. So, so what I'm going to talk about is text mining and textual analysis. And this is the current trend. I don't know how many of you have uh, interest in this field, but a lot of good publications and other schools So I'm going to talk about the textual analysis first. Textual analysis means what? <clears throat> well, what it simply means that how complex the report is and what information the management is you know, presenting a portraying of their company. Is there a message there? And that is what is happening. It's, it's really a very, very exciting thing, and also some of the things that uh, I, I tried. No publication. You can take it and, and work on it. And so, simple word count is a textual analysis. People say that there are a lot of words used that is more complex document than fewer words. More complex words, simple words. More complex sentences, simple sentences. So there are analysis like that people have done and shown that here. How it is started, I think it may be interesting. And I'm learning too. The Department of Defense in the US wanted some kind of a measure that when they write the instruction for these machines working in the war field situation, how what level should it be? So developed a measure. And so the measure is like just a regression model putting the number of words, the complex words, and sentences. If the score is six, that means sixth grade person can read it. If it is 12, 12 grade. So that was a very nice objective way to measure it. And that is where it started. But now it is in the uh, business research, in the psychology, and all that. So word, sentence, multiple phrases, proximity counts, and all that, these are all different kinds of analysis. I'll show you some example. Risk samples. You can measure risk of different kinds. And I'll show you some examples. Fraud risk, financial risk, litigation risk, tax risk, cyber risk, all kinds of risk. How? It is somehow portrayed in their report. Litigation risk, I think one of my finance colleagues uh, wanted to know if there's an easy way to count how many times litigation appears. So actually, he encouraged us to build, build, build that feature in our uh, technology. So now I put the litigation and said, give me counts. Bang, it gives you immediately counts of all the company that you have. Some have one time, two times, and some have 50 times. What do you think? Which is more risky in terms of litigation? Obvious, right? I mean, the one that mentions 50 times, there must be a lot of issues there. So, so those counting of words and sentences and then uh, some of the, you know, uh, what's called, readability indices are already developed. 
So overall risk, financial risk, educational risk, tax risk, and they're focusing not dollars on how do they do a job. I mean, it's not simply that somebody is doing it. It is uh, very, very uh, kind of uh, relevant research. Competition metrics. Yeah, competition metrics mean, can you find which company faces what kind of competition from their own reporting? Isn't that interesting? So this individual at the University of Chicago, Mike Minnis, I don't know if you have read from the Christian publication, it came in job. Very simple concept. <coughs> Counted the number of words that stem from competition, like compete, competed, competing, no, just counted that. And subtracted anything that was negative, like less competition, low competition, and little competition. So got a net number, divided by the total number, and got a measure of competition. Guess what? That was the best measure of competition, anything that previously published. And he got that in job. But less competition, less competition, a little bit. What he said, he wants to measure the proximity search, like less competition within three words, because there will be something else in between. So we, we had to build that feature too. So he would put two words in order, because always he wanted less to be before competition. So we have a feature that you can order or no order. So that will show you the example. Cosine method. What about cosine? I think I'm sure you all know cosine term in trigonometry. Right? So if two lines are parallel, angle is zero, right? So cosine of zero is one. And if two lines or vectors are perpendicular to each other, the angle is 90 degree and cosine of 90 is zero. Someone in education thought of having two documents where each word is a vector. So if two documents are identical word by word, then those vectors are parallel. So cosine of zero will be one. So that is the measure of similarity. So the two documents identical, measure of similarity is one, they are saying. And if two documents have nothing common, then measure of similarity is zero because the angle between the vector is negative. And that is pretty interesting. And we made that feature. So I'll show you something. Very interesting uh, example. Satyam and Vipro. I said, just play around and, and, and I'll show you. This is exciting. Then word variation. That is so much work to be done. One year versus another year. And if somebody is manipulating or defrauding, they might not use some words that they used last year. They may be using something else or vice versa. That is on you, creativity. See what is there that they are not doing or they are doing it that they didn't do last year. Is there a way to filter out the information? So that is there. Sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis means that a lot of work has been done and is still being done. Means positive sentiments. Means information is more positive towards something and negative. So there is already word list. And the word list is in public domain. And one name that comes, I think, McDonald and uh, other author from, from uh, in Notre Dame. So they have their own dictionary of words for this measure. I try to contact them and say, all right, give me the list. I recognize you, acknowledge you, and we incorporate in our system. They were not too happy. <laughs> so what we do, you want the sentiment analysis? Give me that list and we'll do it. So we, we have only done it, except we avoid any kind of trouble. We say, all right, you give us the list, we give you the number. So that way, you are, you know, you can get it from the, as a researcher from their website. And then, of course, you need help to calculate it. So we'll do that. So that's available. We have done that. Of course, you have developed model for uh, fraud risk. And then I'll show you the power already in your hand. You don't have to worry about uh, trying to get where it is. It is here. Actually, I logged in here and it was available to you. Uh, so it is free for all undergraduate, graduate, PhD student, faculty. Use it as much as possible. So, so that's from here. Textual analysis. There are seven different methods. I have references here. And I'm not going to go through that because it's 
basic simple concept, you know, number of words and sentences, and uh, you know, complexity of words. So this is very recent. Anybody knows uh, about this paper, Log Index? It was published 2017, Journal of Accounting and Economics, by Andy Leon from Northwestern. And you can see where the value is. What he found out, all these measures were not really reflecting the business environment because complex word. So the complex word means it is more than two syllables, it is complex. But there are a lot of words in business or business related that may not really be complex for us in the business world. Like company itself or the litigation or you know, some of these words is so normal, natural that it's not complex. So he looked at it and filtered out that these are not complex and then decided a list of words that are complex according to him. And there is a complication, so I mean, I'll show you that they actually have already calculated it and put it available for researchers on their website. Already done for other years, that Bob index, so you can analyze and compare the other uh, measures. So one could get a time series of right, yes, of index for a particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then along with that, you can get all the index from us, all these. And so the beauty is in terms of trying to see is there a industry specific kind of keywords. Maybe in pharmaceutical, people know some of those uh, tough words. I can't even say it rather than <laughs> spelling it. You see, there so was this paper in the day on the use of Darwin. Yeah. So, so I think that's what I'm saying. So much of opportunity, you know. So, so here is just one example. Fog index. Fog number of words divided by number of sentences plus you know, complex words over total words. And the complex words, they define the, you know, the more soluble words. But then people said, well, you know, it has to be domain specific, so then defined it further and, and do that. And that's what uh, McDonald's do. So you can see the score. If the score is 6, then it's 6 bit, 17 means 78. So they adjusted these coefficients to make it, you know, something more reasonable number. Uh, there's another one, small, flash, you know, so I'm going to go to the seventh one that is interesting because it's coming from accountant. So, Journal of Accounting and Economics 2017, it's worthwhile for you to see because they refer it to SEC document that says that company must report in a plain English term. I was not even aware of that. <laughs> I was reading it since I was going to talk to, at Northwestern, uh, you know, I, Leon, uh, you know, he was the one <coughs> conducting me. And so, it's an interesting paper. It can be expanded upon it, maybe more industry specific things. A is more generic, that all right. What the SEC says, the simple uh, English term, and this is what it means, a simple, but at the same time, complex word, may be filtered because business world people know some of these complex words, so it's not any more complex. So, so it's pretty interesting. <coughs> Textual analysis, yeah, this is in, uh, it was published in, I think, Wallace Journal, simply saying that really the reporting world is becoming too complex. Look, 33, 36,000 in 2000, 88, that's IBM annual report, 88,000 in 2005, and I looked at 2019, it's 100 and, 22,000. So it's becoming too complex in terms of the reporting process itself. But that doesn't tell you much because if you're looking at the complexity, simple measures of number of words may not be enough. But it's still it is being talked about in the literature. And I think Leon yeah, even makes comment about XBR. You know XBR? Mm -hmm. So STX, so all the text, so that makes it even bigger, more complex. But that should not be considered in the complexity because if you really want to see it's the word that matters, not the other tax. Uh, this one here, fraud risk model, somebody developed fraud risk model. So this is a practice journal, strategic finance. And what they did, they looked at the nature, the just the sentence structure, and came up with a model that predicted fraud. I will show you the model on the next slide. 
proactive content analysis technique can help management accountants prevent catastrophic financial problems. What happened that before fraud occurs, somehow they were able to sense from what the manager was saying, and they were able to predict fraud. Because financial numbers, they are not very really effective predictors. Why? Because the financial numbers will look as good as the good company. So how can you detect fraud by the financial numbers? But how they're sending the message to the public can make a difference. You know the Enron case? Also is something interesting. You know that you can see they even didn't know, but they were sending messages inadvertently to the public that you know we are becoming more risky in this. So this this is the method, I think. So fraud equal to this regression models, you know, positive emotions, present tense, total moves, and colon. And they were able to predict more effectively. <laughs> Conventional fraud detection method using ratio analysis and other financial data were either unable to detect fraud or unable to detect it soon enough. Very strong mistake. But a word of caution here. What do you think if I'm the one who committed fraud and I know about this model? Do you think I can play with that? Of course, I'll change this whole model, you know, and I'll not report that many <laughs> columns or columns or that. So this will be a dynamic model. So this itself, you can say that, all right, this is now any more valid because people have changed the behavior. But at least this is at that time, think that pretty good. Companies in the US are making tons of money consulting on this. Because the tools are available, they go and fish and get this, and then sell an analyst. Here, give me X amount of dollar, I'll give you this fee. And so, so, why not in India? So these angles will make it uh, less effective in detecting than companies will evolve to the fourth Exactly. So this, this is, I don't think. So they will also people. pass the, this, pass this the report with yeah. the same. See if the score is high. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think this, the criticism, like what you're making, I have personal, you know, pass against it because this is not effective. People will change their behavior. But the next one here, uh, that uh, this second one, non-financial measure. Predicting financial fraud based on non-financial measure is very effective. Means what? Suppose revenue is going up, and the driver of revenue going down, like number of employees, number of stores, number of supplies, whatever the driver is, is going down. Do you think there's a mismatch? Yes, and that is as a kind of symptom, not necessarily the fraud is there, but that then helps you. Think. So this professor uh, Jones, he's my colleague, Jones, uh, they published that in JAR 2009, and he showed empirically, collected the data by hand, they didn't have this kind of tool, we are trying to build that in our system, because he's there, he said, well, unfortunately all his programs were lost because NASDA, I think, uh, uh, I don't know the full form, they said some kind of a uh, government organization that was funding him that why not we develop this as a tool that any 10K is submitted, we let it go through that and see that what is the risk of fraud. So he was working on it, they didn't perfect it, but then he lost interest and flight track and all that, and it has been that many years, so now nothing is available. So I said, well, okay, we can work on it. So we have a feature where I can put some key words or phrase. I will pick up the sentence, and any number, dollar or number, can dump into Excel. But it's still human involvement, it means you have to still see that what number means what. And so it has to do with the employees and number stores. Or, so it will give you a number and then relate it. So it can be done. It will not be then as difficult as manually going through thousands of filings. At least you can sort out. So it is there, but next phase would be to tie that with the next level of intelligence. And maybe that is where we can work together, you know, because we need more ideas and put together things now. So that's is there some way that is sort of we can triangulate the down and the annual report that, that let's say the discussion on there are several consumer fora which are online and so on, where you get to see the kind of product complaints or you know such Sure, I mean, of products. course, exactly. Uh, one should be able to really see yeah. how much you know does the revenue yeah. correlate with what exactly. you see on the ground. 
definitely. I mean, that is that is the future. That's what I'm saying. You know, that you have the tools available. It's just you have to just change your you know kind of a way of doing things and be more creative. It is there, but but somehow we get. We have been in the same situation, you know, because we want to say, all right, no, this is published in Java, and let me work on it, extend it one more, and get another, you know, maybe in Java. But initially, we had to do it. I mean, that's the name of the game. But after you get tenure, maybe then you can be a little bit more, <laughs> you know, risk takers. And so, okay, I didn't show the model, but I think the publication reference, now I can leave it. So now, Simple, very simple textual analysis. So I took two companies, Satyam, we all know, and Ripple. Do you know there's a side story on this? Satyam was audited by one of the big four, Pricewaterhouse. They gave you an opinion, right? And PCOAB, you know what PCOAB is? <coughs> they control the behavior of the auditors. They selected Satyam as a client of PCOB, and they did the audit, and they found out everything is fine. So both of them missed. How did you find out about uh, fraud? The chairman confessed, couldn't take it anymore. He says, riding like a tiger, you get up, you die, and <laughs> keep riding, and die. So there is a basic problem in even the detection of fraud process, and I have published several papers on that. I have been trying to convince the ICP, but you see, I'm a pure researcher. <laughs> I only, <laughs> it needs political connection to influence them. But they are realizing it, having this kind of method. Because KPMG contacted me <coughs> two years back when I was not as active. That we want you to submit a proposal on an invitation basis, and the main theme will be to have theoretical foundation to how to aggregate all this information that auditors collect. Because that is what I did 30 years. It's a huge network of you know, things, you know, like in engineering. You have different assertions, accounts, and all. You have evidence of different assertions, you know, different objectives. It's a big use. But the good thing is that mathematics is there and the computer software are there. We develop it at Kansas. And do you have MATLAB here? Yeah. 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 So it is an add on to MATLAB and very efficient. And uh, I think uh, that works. So that's what I'm saying. So there's so much here that I would love to come back and, and you know, offer that you know how. And because you can develop models, really interesting ones. So, so I just did this simple analysis. <coughs> Look at it. complexity, uh, I think uh, can fog index, running index. Uniformly, Satan is more complex. This is significant, you know, do a statistical test. And Clipro, not as complex. Another method. I mean, it was not a scientific research issue, but I just was curious. You know, let me see what. This is another method. Again, significantly more complex than this one. Then, yeah, this is that uh, paper by my you know, colleague, Keith Jones. So he showed empirically that these models, based on non financial information, is more robust. So this one income goes up, a revenue went up 25%. Employees, 6% down, distribution of, you know, dealer's distribution went down. So there's a mismatch. Here, similar company, okay? Revenue went down, so did the employees and dealers. So, so there's no mismatch there. And in fact, I have talked to some of the experts in this domain, I think Gon Sonyam had a practice in Canada uh, where main purpose is to detect fraud. Guess how they detect fraud? Very interesting story. I don't know whether he finished writing the book or not. He says, okay, if we see that revenue is going up, that means they must have bought more things, right? If they have bought more things, that means they have used more labor to move, they have paid more for shipment. They have used labor to move things from the truck to the storage. So they look at the lowest level. Because the management can fix the upper level accounts. They will not go as down to the lowest level that let's look at the labor. So if there is a mismatch between the number of people working there, moving things back and forth, then they go and investigate. And that is how he was saying that we detect fraud. It is in a similar nature here too. 
Yeah, it's a production model. Talking about it's more useful than exactly. generating the revenue fraud. Right. So if this, for example, the second company did was caught for fraud for yeah. gross profit manipulation. Exactly. Yeah. So, so this is a model that can be more practical, useful in the real world. The other one, you can't even get the data. This is when you really are into the fraud detection because you can't get uh, the, the industry data. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not an accounting yeah. person. So. I was just wondering, given the fact that the MIS now runs through the system, yeah. uh, would it be possible for them to really make it appear to be very diffuse? If any fraud is being done, one can really have very consistent build up from bottom. Exactly. Right? I mean, that is what my concern is. Yes. And so on. It, it, uh, that is exactly my my concern has been. And you know why Pricewaterhouse and PCOB missed uh, shut them? Exactly for that reason, because revenue fraud is commonly, historically it has happened, expense fraud and financial instruments. So what AICP did, the export did, they put a, a standard. You as an auditor must make sure, look at the revenue, make sure you look at the expenses, make sure you look at the financial instrument. Guess what, if I am defrauding, am I stupid to commit fraud again in revenue, knowing the fact that you are going to come and check it? It makes no sense, and that is what Shaktan did. But there, they have several fake salary accounts, so they pay number of employees also. That is what auditors would have got. It. Right, they no, no, no. exactly. Right. But, so but, but, yeah. but basically, even that process, you know, in general term, is deficient. And it reminds me of uh, uh, your homeland security. You all fly, right? I don't know whether you have flown in first class or not. I've had some time upgrades. <laughs> Not that I fly for that. You know, today, even today, they serve wine in a glass tumbler. Do you know that glass? You break it on the seat. It is more lethal than box cutter and ladies' nail fire. Today, do you think so? But their approach is follow the terrorists. If they take explosives in underwear, check everybody underwear. Do you think they will ever take explosive out of here? Makes no sense. Never. Same thing liquid. Now they require check liquid done by everyone. Do you think they will take it again? So there is a deficiency even in that thought process. They are not comprehensive. They look only and follow the terrorists. That is the approach they have used in fraud detection. They only go, but these people who do this, they are more creative. They will not repeat the thing that they know that we are going to check. And so we actually, they have changed the uh, PCAB approach because we raised so much issues. So now they say randomly we select so much and then we select so much from the risk list. Because risk list, if you like, I already made a list. They know that list and they're not going to commit the fraud. So it's a lot of interesting things happening. Okay. Textual analysis. Uh, comment letter. This is a very recent paper by 2016 by Muffet. He used our system. Look at the comments letter. Comments letter, very simple study. Look at the comments. You know what comments letter are? When companies file their annual report, up, then SEC looks at it. And if they find that there is some issue, they write a letter to the company, and the company responds. He analyzed textually and found out what is the pattern where we can predict what kind of pattern will say that they have to amend their annual report. Think about it in terms of the investor. They want to know which company may have to amend their annual report because their stock will be affected. So this is a predictor and, and very interesting for you to publish recently. So those are the things that you as young minds might need to be thinking about something. Sit in the backyard or sip coffee and think about it and try this you know, because the technology is there. Uh, and then again, this is very interesting. Simple concept. I don't know, you may know his name, Feng Li, he is one of the original uh, textual analyst guy from University of Chicago. He made tons of money, he was actually the chairman of the uh, Chinese Stock Exchange, I think he's back in the US now. Simple calculation, risk, risky, risk, uncertain, uncertain, these five, six words, he counted and said, well, take log of one plus that number. And he calls it risk sentiment. Simple calculation. 
And I think, I don't know where he published, but it was published. And it's a pretty interesting method because I did that on Android. Okay? Now look at it. Quarterly, I just wanted more data points. Becoming more risky, 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 risky. This is the year they went bankrupt. That means what? There's a message there. Looks like indirectly they are sending the message that we are becoming more risky, risky. I don't think they knew it. But based on that method, but look Again, like somebody the, can write it. The address is far greater than the address <laughs> so, so, of course, they will play once this is published. I mean, they are going to not mention any words like this. <laughs> so, the, this one again, pretty interesting. You know what is item 1A? Two thousand five. 2005, Security Exchange Commission in the US started requiring business to disclose all business related risks. Gold mine. All business is related risk. Now think about what is mentioned is great. What is not mentioned is great too. Because if I am running a business in cyberspace, and if I don't mention that I have a problem with bandwidth, or risk of security, and all that, it's a problem. But if I mention it, then of course people can analyze it, how it's going out. So this guy, do you know this name? I think you may know this guy. He's one of the big names in the accounting, financial accounting. He looked at item 1A, already segregated, separate section that tells you all about risk. So people are mining this like anything. You know, uh, look at uh, the word counts and tense count, all different words. So this was the first paper. Uh, what did they get here? 14. 14. Yeah, 14. And here is one, financial risk. They came up with their list of terms. So they looked at item 1A, counted these different words, and showed that it measures financial risk. Do you think this is written in stone? There are terms that are not there. I am looking at as an outsider, cyber risk. Do you think cyber risk will reflect financial risk? Of course, somebody can completely worry about the company. Especially a company like mine that are working on cyber space, everything is virtual. We have the whole world trying to attack and, and kill me. That's a financial risk. So there are a lot of terms that you can modify. This was published in the accounting review, I think. So then this one, litigation. They thought their list of litigation and uh, product liability, regulatory, regulatory, all that. Again, opportunity for new research. And it is from item 1A, that is the section where they disclose business risk. On the top, annual report has a section called Management Discussion Analysis, MDMA. That's again great demand. Everyone wants that. All the textual analysis of that section are given in that section, so we do that. Then I didn't realize there's a section in um, proxy statement. You know what they call? CDNA. I didn't know what it was. Compensation and Discussion Analysis. That's again becoming a world mind for research. And how we came about, I don't know if you know the name, uh, Gopal Nada Krishna at Washington. Mm -hmm. So he wanted that CDNA and couldn't get one anywhere. He had a research assistant, it was too complex. Finally, they came to know about us, contacted me, and we gave them data. He was impressed. You know. He says, This is something that we have been trying to get and we didn't. We, we couldn't get it. So this kind of analysis, you can do that, what the management is saying. So this, this one, taxes, I don't know what that means, but these are the terms that came up. So you can do cyber risk. Litigation risk, just to tell you, it's a very important area, especially the insurance company are willing to pay really good dollars for that research. They are funding a project at Kansas, AIG, what is the American Insurance Group? Yes. I mean, almost they died because they had insured all these companies and they all went bankrupt, so they had to really. So he is working, my colleague, a Bayesian model, no objective measurement. But is there a model that can predict on textual analysis? Like if somebody is mentioning two times, three times, somebody 50 times, of course. So that is the opportunity there. So they have, uh, this is the previous slide litigation. So they thought about their own terms. 
I'm sure you can work on it and see. Could it be domain specific? I think we are dealing with domain specific. I mean, you know, a pharmaceutical company will have more risk, or IT will have more risk than you know, some other. So you can define it for that. Uh, competition one, it's pretty interesting. Uh, he did competition, compete, competed, and all that, and subtracted. So, a thousand times this number, net number divided by words. Very simple model. Think about it. It's just his idea, and he used his own programming skill. He, you know, but now he likes our stuff because, and we have created an entire population of competition. We say, well, it's already well established, calculated. So from 94 to 2018, for all the company, we have the data. You get it free. Everything. And now you analyze it. I'll show you something. I played around. At that time, we didn't have the whole data. So I had to submit to the system and get the result and plotted it. So that's interesting. The five companies, telecommunication. Now the purple one, very little competition, right? Very stable. And the green one and the blue one, a lot of variation competition. Economic question as a researcher. Why is it, what kind of company is this that not much competition? They are all in telecommunication, but this is very stable. And this green one and blue one, a lot of fluctuation. From management perspective, if I am the blue one, I have to be careful not getting into trap of the other ones. That is so much of fluctuations. So I have to manage my management. And if I am the blue and green, I want to make sure that we don't face that much of variation of competition. So this is again sought after data. Uh, City University Hong Kong, they have something data like anything. Wrong. Everything they want to have. So we have a <laughs> to control that because we give it free, it's so much of thing. And we don't want anybody to hold it that all right, no, we will get everything, have it, and then work 10 years, 20 years. So that's a, another problem, at least. <laughs> But this is open to you. Look at it. Look at the industry, where it is more fluctuation or not. And, and it depends on you, you know, and <laughs> what you want to Go side by that. I mean, this is interesting. So I took those two companies again, Satyam and uh, Vipro. So I submitted it. And look here. You can get a cosine measure for all the filings annual report, quarterly report, initial filings, uh, proxy statements, comments letter. We could everything. I said, well, you know, why not just put it? So think about you in terms of the opportunity, what you're going to do. Just play around and see. So I got the data, plotted it. And you can do cosine measure across in the years or between two companies. Both are available. So you can say one company versus the other or longitudinal for one company. So I collected the data, and here is the plot. So look at the interesting. This is up there. And this is paper. So there is a dip. Question is, well, is this different from this? Looks like to be different, but this may be regulatory, but definitely this is more. What is it? I don't know. But that is where <laughs> the committed fly. So there is a message there. Take it out. Think about what you can do. But more importantly, this next one, oh yeah, this one is the uh, Enron again. I said, well, let me see Enron with itself. So I started from 99, each quarter, and this is where the computer file. So there is a message here. That's what I'm trying to, trying to tell that right now, research is curiosity. I mean, if someone is lucky to have so structured already that add more value, you would have got a paper, that's good. But it's out of curiosity. You have to be curious in terms of what you are doing. It's quite interesting that uh, <laughs> Marco Polos is actually of yeah. changing too many things across the reporting and very difficult to consistently read it. Yeah. Maybe we can see if at the same time they are able to manage the, yeah. the fact that the measures are available. They yeah. still show so, difference but not capturing in, or not allowing it to be captured exactly. in this kind of information. Uh, it's funny. I mean, that's what it's funny. Yeah. 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 This is really great. So, uh, now, more things. Think about this is completely uh, kind of a uncharted territory, you call it. <laughs> I mean, nobody has done this. So, in terms of opportunity. So, if I look at company, I think I had it probably for September. So, these are the words they did not use in one year. 
and the next year they use and I can short it again and the other one they use last year this word and didn't use this one and then there's a whole frequency distribution. Now the creativity of the researcher is what are these words that they used last year and don't want to use this year? So there may be something that they want to hide. So you have to select that set of words. It may change with the industry, it may be changed by, I don't know what, but that is something that you can play around with. And, you know, other way around too that, you know, and in fact, if you look at Andron, they were very, I would say, uh, bullish in terms of their statements that, oh, everything will be just great, where things were going downhill. And so that also could be a way, you know. Uh, I, one of the <coughs> friends I know, she did uh, come up with a model where if the numbers look too good to be true, be suspicious about it, you know, because maybe they are manipulating it. So it's not simply matching the number that historically it is our industry, but if it is too good, that means there is, could be a problem. Now, this is where the thing that you have right now available is a cloud technology. Uh, you, you, know, you can use your iPad, iPhone, smart, you know, anything. And it's also getting seconds. Anywhere, it's linked to any time, anywhere. Okay. And uh, SEC filings, recently reports, requests coming now from very credible schools like University of Chicago, they keep asking me, can you put European data in the system? Because we can't find a system like this. I wrote to the European Commission, I think they have a hierarchy. Each country has its own, and then they put together as a high commissioner. I think somebody was in Italy, yeah, you know. I wrote, no response. Called, no response. And it's natural. You know, this unknown way, you know, <laughs> why waste my time? But I think I will have to go physically, you know, because now there are some professors in Italy, they are using it, and they are excited about it. They say, well, you have to come. We will host you, and then you can visit around. My experience in Australia, I don't know if I mentioned it, I was there for three weeks visiting professor in Sydney, and then three weeks visiting around other schools. You know, I believe this, it made so much difference that this, six of them now subscribe it because they see the value. Okay. Um, here is a statement by uh, Mike Mills. I really appreciate working with Seeker because the flexibility and speed of both the search engine and customer services make data collection easier and more thorough. Make a note of that. They have everything in the world. They have access to all the big players, Morning Star, Lexus, and all that. And he's saying it's easier and more thorough. And it is more thorough because they are catering to only the companies that are being followed by analysts. And our idea was nothing like that. We just said, let's get everything. So we got everything here, it's small and big and everything. And he used the MBA class for exam. Finding examples from a financial instrument class is also present. I want you to use it. Using the MBA class, using the undergraduate class. I have used in my auditing class, you know, one person was saying, well, I've never seen an adverse opinion. I said, well, just put it. So we put adverse and opinion. Bang, you know, it gave me in seconds all the opinions that were adverse. That's the power. So in the classroom, you can do that. Anyone here doing research and auditing? Right? Yeah, so, so audit, you know, like going comes from opinion, very structured opinion, right? So I can take some key phrases and put it, and it gives me in few seconds all the opinions. I will show you some part of that. Uh, here is the list of the schools. See, you are there. That's one of the prestigious ones. Indian sort of highlighted means. <laughs> but City University Hong Kong, very strong school. Georgetown University, Indian Institute of Ananya, NYU, University of Chicago, uh, New South Wales, Queensland, Sydney, Waterloo, Washington University, Yale. These are top schools. And they are the one really <coughs> getting a lot of data and going non-traditional way. Okay? That's good. So we have 18 million filings, 33 million documents, 
is daily updated. So yesterday data is available today. Okay? No software needed, no programming needed. This is, I was shocked in one school, I don't know, Georgia, Mr. Georgia, Campbell. I met at some conference, he is the program director at Music Group. He said, we require our accounting students to learn Perl and Python. And he still did do. I said, well, why are you wasting their time? Why don't you use our system? They have published papers by co-authoring with somebody who has our system, but they have not subscribed yet. But they don't know what they're missing. But anyway, so <coughs> source by paragraph, table, footnote. Now this one here I'll add, footnote has subcategories, right? Tax related, accounting policy research. So we have done some work on a custom basis that I want only tax related uh, footnotes like this. But we are in the process of creating a classification of footnotes. Because we found out maybe a thousand different variations. So I have to classify it in maybe 20 or 15 major categories. And I have not done any work empirically, so I don't feel like I want to do it. But one of my colleagues now, we go to Nebraska, Tom Kubik, I make my notes. He is the one who has taken advantage of this. He has already four papers he got in Economy Review and Journal of Economy Review. Because he was right there, he said, Doc, can you give me this? Okay, we'll do it, we'll get it. But, guess what? I asked him one day, are you sharing that, telling your friends about it? He said, oh, what's that? My strength is, you know, that I use it, you know. If I tell them that, I said, look, if you don't tell, that means you will not have this strength to know. I mean, I never expected that. I thought my social network will take off. But we are all in a very competitive world. You know, if I have a, a gold mine, I don't want to let anybody know that there is a gold mine there. You know, and that is so. But I think uh, some of these individuals at like Chicago and uh, Yale, uh, I have had lot more positive support from them. You know. uh, so MDNA, we will have CDNA too. It's already being done and processed, and, and we'll add it too. August report. SOPS 404 report, I don't know if you know, this is uh, to do with the weakness in the internal control. I don't have to convince you. So all these different sections. Item 1A, conference part, this is again a lot of demand for it. You know what we have done? Not only we have conference calls and put it for you to search, but we have created a database who said what. Think about it. You know, again, people are text mining that, you know, and trying to see looking at the time series means what they did last year, what they are saying this year. So, so we have passed the information, who said what, and then we are doing on the top any kind of text analysis. So that's again uh, food for thought in the Press releases, and again it came from Mike Minnis. He said, why don't you add press release, conference call it, add not value to your site. Because you know, I am purely terrorist, I never worked in this area. So he said, okay, so I went, went along and saw that where these things are and downloaded it and put it there on the top. Staff follows again, you know, Chicago recommended us. Now, one note that I want to make here, conference calls and press releases, we get it right now from SEC side. Means anywhere it is in the 8K or annual report, we have not used a crawler to go to their website. A lot of companies have on the website. So I've been trying to get, so there are some players you know, who just went manually and uh, using crawler, and they have this bigger fan kind of set. I tried to work with them, but it has not materialized. So I'm working with one individual, and he said that we will help you. So once we get the website of the company, then we can use cloud, and my programmers can go and just get it. So the only problem is that I need website of these companies. If you can provide some, I can fund you and <laughs> give me cut and paste. It will not take some time, but somebody has to do it. So one individual is willing to, he is a company. Uh, I know him, he's a chartered accountant. So, so, so that will be, so we will complete it. Because that is right now a kind of weakness. But we still people want this and do the analysis and put that limitation that it is only, it's still fine for academic work. Because we are still getting thousands and thousands of this, you know is far superior than just hand collecting. Then, 
few features that I want you to make a note. We have no stop work. All the players, big ones, they have a stop work. And what it does to you, that is where you can get exactly what you want, like going to an opinion. Okay. There is substantial doubt about. So is and all that, we have time. So we can get the exact phrase. Do you know the company is saying, we may never be profitable? You know that? Companies say that. You want to know who are these people, right? I got it in two seconds on the company that I'm mentioning. It. Then one of my friend, the researcher, book, said, what kind of opinion they are getting? So I put the going concern phrases. And you not believe. 50% or less than 50% are getting going concern opinion, remaining getting clean opinion. Why is it? That's the economic question. I have not finished that. I mean, I'm not going to do the research that I've known any more people. That's again open to opportunity. Okay. Specific uh, maybe the industry related issues. And I found out that they were pharmaceutical companies and mostly influence in technology. And why people will invest? Many reasons. One maybe have millions and billions, now I want to take risk. If it stays afloat and makes money, I make 10 times or 100 times. If I lose it, fine, it's insignificant. So, but this one here, you do, we do not have qualified financial expert. You know, it is required in the US to have a financial expert on the board or audit committee. If you don't have it, disclose it. Who are this company? You can't do that. Find out it's impossible. Human equal. Here, you find some patterns, and I'll tell you how to find the pattern. Because this thing, I have to fish around, so I put some key words in proximity, like 10 words, 15 words, 20 words, and then you give me snippets. So I read the paragraph and identify the patterns. So I found out about five or six different patterns, I put all of them and got the whole population. Okay? Yeah, now I'll show you something. This is something interesting. A, a phrase here. Let me go to this. So what is the time now? I don't want to. Uh, five. Five more minutes? Uh, it's already five. Okay. In terms of exciting you, I'm very close. I want to just show you something. You know, because anyone here, how many of you have used this technology? See that? How much you are missing? Play around. Yes, that's what I felt like I need to go and show and excite you people that you know there's so much opportunity here and didn't cost too much time you know because it took second that's what I want to show you uh, this example so sign it again uh, because I think what will happen I tested it it works so it will take me yeah no it's uh, actually it shouldn't uh, it should tell me yeah it's okay but it took too long to process okay uh, okay it's not remembering me so I will have to put Last time um, I was able to log in from your. We went library last time. No, no, no. Right now, it didn't ask for me to log in. So I don't know why it asked me this time, but anyway, that's fine, I'll do it. Because uh, you have access to it here. And I didn't have to put my login number, but it is fine. <coughs> you have a lot of uh, places this thing available that you don't need to log in. But you should create login, then you can work from home or anywhere abroad, you can do that. So create. And it's very easy. I think yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, use your own ID of uh, IIMA that uh, AC that I and then use your own uh, password. 
The only thing is that they to send you email and you have to validate it. Go to your email and say, okay, because we want to see the genuine user. And, and then next time it will not ask for it. And then you are ready. So, so do that. Okay, so now I want to show you. So there are two sides of it. Right hand side is all the filings. And you can see how many filings you have. You name it, it is there. If anything not there, we can add it. It's, it's not a big deal. So, and left hand side is all the logic. So the first one is exact phrase. So you can have Boolean logic. Phrase means not only words, I put only words right now, but you can have like, uh, uh, we may not be profitable, or another version, you know, we will not make profit, or whatever it is, so you can put, so. Or means vertical line, no quote, nothing. Plus means and, A plus B means A and B, minus means A, not B, minus. So that's the operation, but if you have combination of things, you put it like what the Boolean logic says, you know, that you put in parentheses A plus B, then minus C, or all that. And the next one is proximity search. And here there is also find that there is a counter that is not a, you know, just one phrase. So that is not exciting. I had it here, integration, and you count it. But we have a feature here that's called request form. So you've got 10,000 snippets or 10,000 tables. Fill it out the request form. And it will give you all that in Excel file. That part. If there is a problem, send me a note. I love to work on these things, you know. And I can show you, or we can get you the data. Because we have a very efficient system, so not much effort we have to make. Except if your need is not more intricate, so we have to reprogram things. But we are doing that. We are happy to do that. Uh, so proximity search. This is where you put two words within so many, and also you. Uh, it takes only seconds to show. So I think these two features I'm going to show you. Then you have uh, here. This part here is not any more relevant because that can be done here, like all the words, none of the words, one of the words, and all that. And then all the company, set of companies, copy C I K and just paste it. You don't have to worry about anything whether it's a comma, a space, doesn't matter. Just put it. Uh, one company. If you have one company you want, I will avoid using the name. Because sometimes company has INC point, dot, ink. Then it starts thinking about looking at all the ink companies. So you get unnecessary garbage. So put CIK. And then, and then uh, the number of years, you can have one year, all years. Then we have also industry, SIC code. If you click on it, it will give you the whole list. Pharmaceutical, you know, information technology, what not. Right now, I'm looking at all. So what I want is look at all the annual report that has these four words or phrases: futures, options. I can't read that. Good. <laughs> swaps, swaps, and hedging. That was a lot of gifts from Mother Nature when you get old. <laughs> and I shouldn't be doing this, you know. I don't know. All you know now how old I am. <laughs> only three years away from 80. But, you know, it's all in your mind. If you're excited about what you do, I think I guess somehow people say, where do you get your energy? I say, I don't know, but I'm happy to what I do. Okay, so, uh, let's see. So I will say, uh, so I selected, put the phrase, uh, paragraph, and select here uh, all the annual reports. So I can one click here and get all the annual reports, right? Ready? Go. Okay. How many hits? 20, 21,000, 20, uh, 21,862. Yeah. 21, how many seconds do you take? I want to show you this statement. <laughs> because, you know, that is... So I go back. And I will read it if you can't read it. This is a professor, I don't know if you know, Robert from University of Texas, Dallas. This is the first year, 2013. Actually, I did a search with four keywords, future, options, options, and hedging, for 2001 to 2, just two years. 
And I was very impressed as I read through the extract of what the uh, search turned up. I have a colleague, make a note. I have a colleague that has spent a year with two colleagues at UT Austin trying to produce this type of research. Three man years of all the high powered individuals, you know, at the University of Texas Austin, very strong school. Waste of their energy. Think about it. And what they are using? Wharton School words. They are, they are trying to copy things from us, you know, uh, but it's still not as good. But that's the way the world works. <laughs> and you are paying, I mean, this is excessively expensive, you know, system, and it's not as good. You know. In fact, they didn't have their data. Now they copy the us and then also having their own data, but it's nowhere close to what they have. So that's the kind of place. Then another one here. Uh, yeah, this is a small example. I'll leave this slide with uh, Josie and no member of the board you know, qualified, you know, like financial experts. Then this one was interesting. Chairman of the board and CEO. Now think about it, what it is. CEO is also chairman of the board. Do you think that board is independent? If the chairman, the CEO, is the chairman of the board, that board is now uh, independent. And that's an issue, right? So one person was collecting by client. He spent three months to get 100 data points. And here in 28 seconds, we got 21,000 our population. What I had to do is find the pattern. So I put some keywords and found some eight or seven different patterns, and I put it there, and 28 seconds I got the entire population. I'm thinking of maybe having the data ready and give it to people, but I can show you. So, so this one, so all these things we can create it, but you know, I don't have it because I don't know how many people will need it. But that's the kind of things we can do. Next, um, proximity. So I want to show you that. Proximity search. Especially when you are trying to find tables. One key point that I want to tell you that make a note. If you want a unique table, look at the table and identify some key word within certain proximity that defines that particular table. And it gives you all the tables there. Right? And so people are asking, how do I get the executive names, uh, bios? So I look at some of the tables, I found name and age always will appear together. We are creating the database, but I want to show you the process, how you get it, you know, something that you don't know how to get it. You know, look at some sample, look at the tables, and put some keywords. So I found out that name and age together within two actually uh, defines those tables. And so I will put that. So here, I will get rid of this. Uh, so remember that plus, minus, and vertical bar is important. Now the next one, okay, so proximity, name, age, within two, so that's two, and table, I want table, and uh, this is actually in proxy statement, which is DF4T, so I'll select DF4T, are you ready? Let's see. What did I do with here? Something I can address. Name is, I think, is not name. Name. That you can see. Misspelling also will get you. So these guys have misspelled name. Now maybe a French guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Actually, you know, there is something interesting. Going concern. So I put the phases. I got the company saying that auditor has given coin control opinion. When I look at the opinion, it has no coin control opinion. It's very strange. So, so, so whether it was a mistake of the auditors or what, so those are the things you can fix over here too. That if there is a mismatch in terms of what they are saying, easy to do it. So now, let's go. Thank you. So now you know how bad a typist I am. Look at that now. Look at that. How many? Really? It, 82,000 tables in a second, and you can download entire this table in Excel. Entire. 
And that is where I get worried because sometimes some students, somewhere in the world, they want to suck up everything. So we are monitoring. If somebody is trying to every day just download and talk to police and say, hold up, work on your project, to finish it, we'll give you another one. Now, in the table, think about it. Each company has different headings, not exactly the same. So the way it is the data you get output, one set of rows for one company, another set of rows for another company. The first row will be the heading and then the number. Second row, headings and number. What I have to do is, or maybe involve some research professor, create a taxonomy of the major headings and the synonyms, and the programmers can populate that. You know how much it costs to have uh, board members' data? Uh, board apps? $50,000. Just per board member. You create board data. Compensation. For compensation, same thing. I found out, I mean, salary and bonus together. Let's see what happens, salary and bonus. So that means you are not limited to only, uh, you know, these say, uh, textual analysis, but you can do so much. I mean, right here I can have a project in my class, you know, salary and bonus, how it is changing by years, how it is changing by industry, how, you know, what are these things? Think about the problem of So now, do this, see, again, look at 113,000 tables I got, again I can download it. I can go by a specific industry. Nice tables. I don't see here. It's beautiful there. <laughs> but you can imagine. I'll show you one more thing. Harvard Business School contacted me, wanted to find out who all have invested in Uber. You know Uber, right? It's not a public company, but they wanted to know who all have invested there. So they contacted me. So I said, okay, let's try. So. We thought, okay, let's put Uber in our proximity search. And they wanted to know preferred stock. So I put Uber and preferred. Two. And we don't know how close it will be, so I just put a, a kind of a wild guess 10. And then again in table, but they didn't know where it will be. They said, we don't know where it is. I said, okay, let's look at R. So we are talking about 33 million right now documents. So I'll select all. 33 million documents. Give me all the table that has Uber and preferred within 10 and see what happens. It may take more than a few seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Oh no, it's pretty good. You have very good internet here. <laughs> so table will download. Now I tried, so this thing, couple of things. One, where it is. Look at that, NCSR, 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 and there's NQ, you know, this one is 10. There is a publication, NCSR, I didn't know what it was, some professor, I don't know whether it was the Chicago, that they want to, us to add it. SEC requires that these investment banks should disclose where they invest. So look at the name of these companies. This is a fund, trust. Transamerica, General Services, Hartford, Hartford. So these are actually funds, and they have to disclose where they are. So I looked at some of the Indian companies, I think it was uh, Infosys, who all have invested, and I tried General Motors. So these are, what do you call, uh, investor of some kind, what is it? Uh, industrial, not industrial. You know, in, mostly investment banks, are, uh, bankers, they do it, or uh, other funds. Uh, so you can get a specific. Nice tables, it's here, that tells you the Uber, preferred stock, so many shares, so many. Look at this, this is not beautiful. <laughs> you know, it, it just yeah, seems. Yeah, yeah, it's actually it's <laughs> snapshot of the. Yeah. So, so that kind of things you can get. Okay. So now, a question uh, before we do. I will I will conclude by showing you a last slide. Let me uh, go quickly. And uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to meet the dean, and so I don't want him to wait too long. Uh, yeah, like this information. Put a phrase next to it. Very valuable information. 
like where is this incorporated? You can't get, there's no data. Fiscal year end, their tax ID. Just look at one example and look at the phrase and put it, give me the next word. So we have created the database because I know that people are asking and it's easy, so we did that. But I'm just showing you how you do that. This is very interesting. Someone wanted to know at what time that particular filing was accepted by SEC. You know why? Because you want to see the market reaction, right? It's not a global from anywhere now. So I looked at some of them and always appears before access and number. So I said, give me a word before that. And I got the entire population of that went to accept it. So what we did, we have it available now for everybody. We just created a database and ready. So those are the things. Business address. I said business address, next 22 hours is the address. I started just showing them what you can do, but then we created it. I said, well, just create it. Uh, audit committee already, I have done it. Audit committee met, board met. I created that just uh, last month. How? Again, I put the pattern. Audit committee met, held, and all that. I found for 15 different variations. And then it was just put on that and give me the next word, I read before. Because there, there were three meetings of audit committee. Our audit committee met three times. Audit committee had three meetings. Exhaustively, I put that and got the data. So it is ready for you. Uh, board meeting, same thing I did. Uh, I did all of that. Okay, this this one is done. Uh, this again, not for the text or analysis. You want unique line item on the balance sheet. It's not available from the big players because they have normalized the data. So this is just example. Air traffic liability, you cannot get from CompuScat. You cannot get from money Mr. nowhere. Here you just put it and run the table, get all the tables, bang. So this is just an advertising expense. I was in uh, Australia, they couldn't get it from Campus Tech, and we played around the, what are the key words. We finally found out the advertising expense uh, is the key word, and then we got it. Uh, market expense, off balance sheet, fuel has all these unique terms you can't get. And here, uh, this one here, yeah, you can download all. These are the databases. We have nine databases now, all free to you. Go to the website and see it and which one you want. So I want to just show you. Again, the first year, some of you may know this name. Bill Kenny, he's a distinguished professor. He's now retired just last year like me. University of Texas, Austin. Look at the last. I hope this thing takes off. I have needed it all my life. I mean, it is that good, you can see, it, you know, play around a few seconds. And he warns me, the last, you know that there are all these players in the market, so I hope it takes off. That was seven, no, 2013. I'm happy that I survived this last seven years. It is wonderful thing. And thanks to you all that you trusted in me. This one again, you know, introduction by Mike Minis over the last time in Northwestern. He writes a note to Andy. I hope all is well. This is a somewhat odd email from me. So he introduced me and then he said, I use CKR for both research and teaching. It is an excellent textual analysis tool for all sort of SEC documents. Very cool tool and I have known Raj for several years now. And so my emphasis is you play around, be creative, I'm there to help you. I think I have still some excitement that sometimes somebody says, well, how do I get this Raj and all this? Blockchain and this and that. I said, okay, I'll play around and then next time I will be. So we can meet on face to face using the web camera and, and talk about these things. Uh, this is something someone wanted to find out which are the companies where auditors are related. Do you understand the question? So I asked, what do you define relation? How do you define? So she said that if the retired audit part partner is on the board, there's a relationship, right? But how do you find out all this company? So I played around and I found out the pattern. So first I found out uh, for Deloitte that these are their clients and I put that CIK code and put some phrase where retired audit partner and board, something like that. Guess what? I got all that company. I sent her a sample. Entire Austin, Texas faculty where we did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the conclusion. Yeah, look at the list. Here's the conclusion. For your information, 
the outcome is a switch from SAC analytics, that's the board document from Wharton, they copied our idea, and said switch from there to C category next year. I think that is a decent outcome for our solutions. The problem is that no matter how good your product is, the brand name matters. So I'm in that phase. And given that top schools shall be, yes. So thank you all. Uh, the last slide is here that I think, see that this is the well concerned, this is the we may not be profitable. I mean, you can do real economic interest study. So last one is this. Knowledge, imagination, and equity will drive the future research, not the cooked up data. And that is where I want you to get excited and thank you all for providing this opportunity. Thank you.